Chapter Six of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Six A Lost Sister. Two weeks later, many changes had taken place. Mr. Tenovitz had agreed to have one of the two large black rooms transformed into a modern kitchen at one end, and the other end arranged so that it might be used as a dining room. In that room, the early morning sun found its way, and when Lena May had filled the windows with boxes containing the flowering plants brought from the home gardens, it assumed a cheerfulness that delighted the heart of the little housekeeper. Two, the huge chandeliers in the salon, had been wired with electricity, and great was the joy in the heart of Bob's on the night when they were first lighted. The rich furnishings from their own drawing-room were in place, and the effect was far more homelike than Gloria had supposed possible. The two large rooms on the other side of the wide dividing hall had been fitted up as bedchambers, and the furniture that they did not need had been stored in the large room over the kitchen. How Lena May had dreaded that first night they had spent in the old house, not because she believed it to be haunted, Gloria had convinced her that that could not possibly be so, but because of the unusual noises she knew that she would not be able to sleep a wink. Nor was she, for each time that she fell into a light slumber, a shriek from some passing tug awakened her, and a dozen times at least she seized her roommate, exclaiming, "'Glo, what was that?' Sometimes it was a band of hoodlums passing, or again an early milk wagon, or some of the many noises which accompanied the night activities of the factory that was their next-door neighbour. It was a very pale, sleepy-eyed Lena May who set about getting breakfast the next morning, with Gloria helping, but Bob's looking as refreshed as though she had spent the night in her own room on Long Island, where the poor whippoorwill was the only disturber of the peace. "'You'll get used to it soon,' that beaming maiden told Lena May, and then, when the youngest girl had gone with a small watering-pot to attend to the needs of her flower-gardens in the front of the house, Bobs added softly, "'Glo, how have you planned things? It never would do to leave Lena May all alone in the house, would it? And yet you and I must go out and earn our daily bread.' "'I shall take Lena May with me wherever I go. That is, I will at first, until we have things adjusted.' "'the older sister replied. "'Then she inquired, "'What do you intend to do, Bobsy, "'or is it a secret as yet?' "'It sure is,' was the laughing reply, "'a secret from myself as well as from everyone else. "'But I'm going to start out all alone "'into the great city of New York this morning "'and give it the once-over.' "'Roberta Vandergrift, didn't you promise me "'that you would talk like a Johnsonian "'if we would rent this house?' "'Gloria reprimanded.' The irrepressible younger girl's eyes twinkled. "'My revered sister,' she said solemnly, "'my plans for the day are as yet veiled in mystery, "'but, with your kind permission, "'I will endeavour to discover in this vast metropolis "'some refined occupation, "'the doing of which will prove sufficiently remunerative "'to enable me to at least assist "'in the recuperation of our fallen fortunes.' "'Then, rising and making a deep bow, "'her right hand on her heart,' That mischievous girl inquired, "'Miss Vandergrift, shall I continue conversing in that way "'during our sojourn in this ancient mansion, "'or shall I be just natural?' "'Lena May, who had returned, joined in the laughter, "'and begged, "'Do be natural, Bobs, please, but not too natural.' "'Thank you, mademoiselles, for your kind permission, "'and now I believe I will don my outdoor apparel "'and go in search of a profession.' "'Gloria looked anxiously at the young girl before her, who was of such a splendid athletic physique, whose cheeks were ruddy with health, and whose eyes were glowing with enthusiasm. Ought she to permit Bobs to go alone into the great surging mass of humanity so unprotected? Roberta, she began, do not be too trusting, dear. Remember that the city is full of dangers that lurk in out-of-the-way places. The younger girl put both hands on the shoulders of the oldest sister, and, looking steadily into her eyes, she said seriously, "'Glow, dear, you have taught us that the greatest thing a parent can do for her daughter is to teach her to be self-reliant, 
that she may stand alone as sooner or later she will have to do. I shall be careful, as I do not wish to cause my sisters needless worry or anxiety, but I must begin to live my own life. You really wish me to do this, do you not, Gloria? Yes, dear, was the reply, and I am sure the love of our mother will guide and guard you. Good-bye and good luck. When Bobs had gone, Lena May slipped up to the older sister, who had remained seated, and, putting a loving arm over the strong shoulders, she said tenderly, "'Glow, there are tears in your eyes. Why? Do you mind Bobs's going alone out into the world?' "'I was thinking of Mother, dear, and wishing I could better take her place to you younger girls. And, too, I am worried just a little, because Gwendolyn does not write. It was a great sorrow to me, Pet, to find that she had left without saying good-bye, and I can't help but fear that I was hasty when I told her that she mustn't plan her life apart from us if she could not be more harmonious. Then, rising, she added, Oh, well, things will surely turn out for the best, little girl. Come now, let us do our bit of tidying, and then go over to the settlement house and find out what my hours are to be. But all that day, try as she might to be cheerful, the mothering heart of Gloria was filled with anxiety concerning her two charges. Would all be well with the venturous bobs? And why didn't Gwen write? End of chapter 6